Rizal Park, Luneta. Isa itong mohon, isang bantayog, isang landmark. Mga kaibigan, mayaman man o mahirap, taga-probinsya man o taga-Maynila, Pilipino o dayuhan, dito pumupunta upang mamasyal, magsaya, magpalakas, magdiwa. Ito po ang pinaka-importanteng parke sa kasaysayan ng bansa. At sa maraming pagkakataon, dito tayo nagkaroon ng kabayanihan, trahedya, pagkilos, pagdiriwang, at pagsasaya bilang isang bansa. Ang Maynila ang kabesera ng Pilipinas. Pero ang Rizal Park Luneta ang puso ng Republika. Makasaysayang araw po sa inyong lahat. Ako po si Xiao Chua, isang public historian. Samahan niyo po ako sa Rizal Park Luneta Walking Tour. Magandang gabi sa inyong lahat. Malugod po namin binabati ang lahat ng mga nakikibahagi sa Park Conversations webisode para sa gabi ito. Ang proyektong ito ay handog sa inyo ng National Parks Development Committee at ng Department of Tourism. Bago natin simula ng ating programa, mayroon lamang kaming kaunting paalala para sa mga manunood. Una, ang Park Conversations webisode ay mapapanood ng live sa ating Facebook page sa facebook.com slash npdc.ph Magiging available ito on demand pagkatapos ng ating live discussion. Hinihikayat po namin ng lahat na i-share ang webinar na ito sa kanilang mga kaibigan sa social media gamit ang ating official hashtag, hashtag Park Conversations. Ikalawa, Nais naming marinig ang inyong mga komento at makita ang inyong mga reaksyon sa live discussion. Para sa Zoom participants, kung kayo ay may mga tanong para sa ating speaker, maaari ninyo itong iparating sa amin sa pamamagitan ng Q&A button na matatagpuan sa ibabang bahagi ng inyong screen. Para naman sa ating mga viewers sa Facebook, maaari ninyong i-comment ang inyong mga katanungan sa live video na ito. Sisikapi namin masagot ang lahat ng inyong katanungan sa nakatakdang oras. Panghuli, ang mga makakakompleto lamang sa pagsagot ng ating online survey form ang makakatanggap ng copy ng kanilang digital certificate. Kaya abangan po ninyo sa chat box at comment section ang online survey link na aming ipopost. Pakireview po ang inyong entry details lalo na ang inyong pangalan bago i-click ang submit button. Dahil ito po ang aming ilalagay sa inyong digital certificate. Iyon lamang po ang ilang mga paalala. Magandang gabi sa inyong lahat. Welcome po sa ating 31st webisode ng Park Conversations na pinamagatang Creating Better Open Spaces Towards Mental Strength and Creativity. Ako si Mia Lawenko, ang inyong host para sa ating Park Conversations ngayong gabi. Ang special webisode na ito ay handog sa inyo ng National Parks Development Committee at ng Department of Tourism bilang bahagi ng ating pagdiriwang ng World Tourism Day na ginaganap tuwing September 27 ng bawat taon. The theme of our celebrations for this year is Tourism for Inclusive Growth. 
For this webisode, we will discuss how public parks and open spaces help promote the value of sustainable and inclusive tourism, especially during this pandemic. Tonight, we are honored to be graced with the presence of the 4th District of Pangasinan representative, Congressman Christopher Toff, VP de Venecia, our guest speaker for tonight. To formally introduce our distinguished speaker, let us all welcome the Deputy Executive Director of the National Parks Development Committee, Mr. Jezreel Gaius Apilar. Thank you, Mia. Good evening, everyone. As declared by the World Tourism Organization, the World Tourism Day 2021 has been designated as a day to focus on responsible and sustainable tourism to make sure that every part of the sector, including communities, minorities, and the youth enjoy the benefits of tourism. In line with the theme of our celebration, tourism for inclusive growth, the National Parks Development Committee continuously promotes the value and contribution of accessible public parks and open spaces to improve our physical health and well being, especially in the time of pandemic. Joining us in our efforts tonight to ensure that our parks and open spaces can be widely enjoyed by the communities are our policymakers who advocate for better parks through laws and policies. We are indeed honored to be joined by one of our youngest legislators who support the improvement and development of our parks. Our speaker is a proud fellow millennial who holds a bachelor's degree in political science from the Ateneo de Manila University and recently finished courses at the Harvard Kennedy School of Government, completing the Public Leadership Program. At present, he is the representative of the 4th District of Pangasinan, sitting as the Deputy Majority Leader in the Lower House. He is also the Chairman of the Special Committee on Creative Industry and Performing Arts, and a member of numerous committees, including the Committee on Basic Education and Culture and Committee on tourism, where he champions his culture and tourism advocacies. He's the principal author of the following measures, among others, the Philippine Creative Industries Bill, the Eddie Garcia Bill, Freelancers Protection Bill, Audiovisual Tourism Bill, Fund Our Museums Bill, Philippine Music Industry Bill, and the Film and Live Events Recovery Bill. And of course, he is also co-author of the National Parks Act, an act establishing the Philippine National Public Park System. With the rigor of both his parliamentary work and his constituency work in the district, he advocates for multi-sectoral collaboration and expansion of livelihood in the rural countryside through various forms of tourism and agricultural modernization, as well as galvanizing culture and creative industry for economic growth and nation building. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome our guest speaker for tonight, the Honorable Christopher Toff, VP de Venecia. Thank you, Jezreel. Can I be heard? Yes, we can hear you. <clears throat> all right, good evening, everyone. Uh, isang malikaing pagbati po sa inyong lahat. And uh, thank you very much, Deputy Executive Director Jezreel Apilar, my friend, for the generous introduction. And of course, I want to greet also uh, the DOT led by my BFF, uh, Sec. Berna Romulo Puyat, the National Parks Development Committee, which is led by its executive director, Cecile Lorenzana Romero. And uh, of course, special mention to the Cultural and Public Affairs Division for inviting me to this event. Uh, that said, I would like to greet everyone a happy World Tourism Day. The importance of open public spaces in our city and urban life, and I have to qualify that with green and well-designed open public spaces, cannot be denied, especially in this day and age. More than our hunches and perceptions, there is already a considerable amount of literature on the benefits of open public spaces to physical activity, mental well-being, and other health outcomes. According to the National Heart Foundation of Australia, there is scientific proof that living within walking distance of parks and in neighborhoods with more green open spaces is linked to positive health outcomes. 
lower probability of high normal blood pressure in women during pregnancy, good mental health, and even higher birth weights. Health benefits have also been observed on people living within a farther distance from public open spaces. In the UK, for example, people living with higher amounts of green spaces within a five kilometer radius were found to have lower levels of type two diabetes. Similarly, more green open public spaces of up to 4.8 kilometers from home was associated with lower mortality in Florida, USA. Meanwhile, a Canadian study found that each additional hectare of park area within one kilometer from home increased by 17% the likelihood of an adult achieving the recommended 150 minutes or more of moderate to strenuous physical activity per day. Putting up public spaces for the sake of putting them up, however, is not enough. For one, the fear of crime from using open public spaces is still very much a reality. Children are often prevented from using existing parks because of parents' fear of crime, especially on crimes against women and children. Therefore, in addition to identifying and constructing open public spaces, good design and sustainable management must be ensured to help allay these fears. There are also economic benefits to well-designed urban spaces. According to the Design Council in the United Kingdom, a high-quality public environment can have a significant impact on the economic life of urban centers. The presence of good parks, squares, gardens, and other public spaces has become a vital business and marketing tool. Companies are naturally more attracted to locations that offer better designed and better managed public spaces because these spaces also attract customers, employees, and services. Hence, having open public spaces within our urban centers and even outside of them is far from being a nice to have for any community. Spending for these projects is an investment because they help solve other existing issues on health, public safety, and even the economy. Open public spaces are likewise not reserved for rich and developed countries. In fact, they are needed more in developing countries such as the Philippines because cities in less developed countries are actually more densely populated than cities in rich countries. One of the ways by which Congress has tried to resolve the problem of our national and local parks is through legislation. While we have filed a multitude of measures that all touch upon this issue one way or another, perhaps one of them would be most of most interest for purposes of this conversation, or rather this park conversation. House Bill 8507, or the proposed National Parks Act, was filed in January of this year by Congresswoman Geraldine Roman, myself as support, and other members of the Arts, Culture, and Creative Industries Bloc of the 18th Congress, or ACHIEB. For those of you who don't know, ACHIEB is a non-formal, nonpartisan group of legislators in the present Congress whose main thrust is to support policies and programs that promote the role of creativity in our daily lives and also in nation building and sustainable development. House Bill 8507 is a long document in its current form, 16 pages to be exact. So I wanted to make it easier for everyone to remember its salient features by using a simple acronym, which is none other than, you guessed it, PARKS, P-A-R-K-S. These letters represent some of the principles behind this measure. So let's begin with P which stands for Proper Governance. Chapter 2 of the bill sets forth the establishment of the National and Local Public Parks Authority, or the NALPA. The NALPA shall be composed of a board and a secretariat. The board, in turn, will include the following agencies and entities, the Department of Tourism, 
as chairperson of the body, the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, represented by the Director of Biodiversity Management Bureau as co-chair, the Department of Public Works and Highways, the Department of Agriculture, the Department of Interior and Local Government, the Commission on Higher Education, the Technical Educational and Skills Development Authority, or TESDA, as well as four representatives from the private sector, two of whom shall be architects, and the other two shall be members of the academe, with a preference on professors from urban planning departments. The powers of this board shall include the following. The creation and execution of a NALPA system, the establishment and maintenance of national and urban parks, open and green spaces, and recreational facilities, ensuring the equal active participation in parks management of national government agencies, LGUs, academe, and private sector, establishing minimum quotas of land for public parks, giving guidance to LGUs on the management of local open parks, consultation of interest groups, among other mandates and functions. The National Secretariat of the NALPA, which shall be an independent agency of the Executive Department attached to the Office of the President for budgetary and administrative purposes, will then be in charge of establishing and formulating a National Parks Development Plan in which all concerned groups can participate. The Secretariat will be headed by an administrator appointed by the President and ranked as an undersecretary within the Bureau. The Office of the Administrator shall ensure that the purposes of the proposed measure are attended to on a day-to-day -day basis. Through the authority so structured, a whole-of-government approach and even a whole-of-society approach shall be employed towards developing our country's open public spaces. The second letter in the acronym PARKS is letter A, which stands for Awards and Recognition. In the creative field, one of the best ways to encourage beautiful works is by recognizing the best of them in a credible and independent awards program. Section 26 of the bill recognizes this strategy by institutionalizing an annual National Parks and Green Spaces competition that shall be administered by the authority. The authority will be charged with the task of setting forth the guidelines of the award-giving body, but it must ensure that the same would be efficient and effective in attaining the ultimate goal of encouraging well-designed public spaces. The authority will likewise be mandated to support Filipino entries to international competitions of the same nature. In many of our consultations with design professionals, we often receive suggestions to institutionalize awards and recognition systems and programs for well-designed projects. In our legislative capacity, we also recognize creatives and artists who bring home pride and honor to the country when they win awards abroad. I can honestly say that these simple resolutions that we have filed in the past few months mean the world to them. Truly, awards and recognitions are proven ways to encourage excellent work from our creative Filipino talents. After letter A is letter R, which stands for Review of Existing Open Public Spaces. Section 17 of the bill provides that within three years from the effectivity of the said measure, when passed, and enacted into law, the authority shall have come up with a comprehensive study of the national parks, urban parks, open spaces, and recreational area facilities programs of the national government and of all our LGUs. The bill recognizes that, that there are existing LGUs and government entities that look after our country's parks and green spaces. In fact, the bill recognizes outright that for all intents and purposes, the Rizal Park and Paco Park shall be considered as national parks. However, it opens the possibility of identifying more spaces as national parks, provided that the overall circumstances of these spaces exhibit qualities of national significance. 
letter K and parks is for knowledge building. Earlier, you might have wondered, but nandyan si Ched and Tesda sa composition ng board. To say that education has a role and is perhaps the root of our issues might sound like a cliche, and believe me, I'm one who always try to veer, tries to veer away from motherhood statements. However, based on our consultations, the education sector and the issues that it is facing always crops up in almost any issue. The role of the academe cannot be downplayed, not just in this bill, but in so many of our measures for the creative industries. Section 16 of House Bill 8507 establishes the National Parks Institute, which shall serve as the training and development arm of the authority. In coordination with CHED and state universities and colleges, as well as with private universities and institutions, the National Parks Institute shall establish a unique training course aimed not only at all the personnel of the authority, but also at personnel of LGUs, other agencies, and even private entities in the same field of practice. To ensure that beautiful national and local parks proliferate across the country, we must create a pool of well-trained individuals in the field of parks management. Building a culture of knowledge and a system where the academe can actively participate in the development of our park systems ensures that programs are implemented and managed in a sustainable manner. And finally, S in parks is for sustainability mechanisms. As important it is to maintain a pool of trained and skilled personnel in this area of governance, it is equally, if not more important, to ensure that the authority's fiscal health is sustainable. Let's face it, how can we even train our people without the proper budget allocation for it, diba? Right? Across the bill, you will find measures that all attempt to make sure that the programs of the measure will always be funded regardless of the other priorities of government. While ultimately it relies on the General Appropriations Act, the goal is to make it fiscally independent as far as practicable from the annual budget process by establishing other sources of revenue for the authority. For instance, while admission to national and local parks shall be made free of charge, the authority is nonetheless empowered to collect fees, of course, at reasonable rates for the special use of the same, say, for concerts and other specific gatherings under Section 22. So meaning we are giving it the capacity to fundraise through special projects and other types of activities. The authority may also exact reasonable fees and charges for services provided and trainings conducted and retain such earnings for their own use under Section 23. Under Section 24, a NALPA fund is likewise created. The fund will be set up using an initial 100 million peso allocation from the national government. Donations to the authority, as well as any income that it may generate, shall also redound to the fund. The interest income of the fund shall then be used for awarding grants and assistance to park development programs. Finally, the authority is also empowered to undertake commercial operations within the premises of the parks. So as long as the principles of the measure are respected. The authority, for instance, can lease certain areas for up to five years per contract, as well as engage in other activities that could possibly add to their coffers so that they can implement even more programs to benefit this particular measure. So just to recap, P is for proper governance, A is awards and recognition, R is for review of existing parks and assets, K is for knowledge building, and S is for sustainability. We hope that through the principles of parks, our country will begin to benefit from the better identification, management, and maintenance of our national and local parks. That being said, I cannot leave this forum without giving everyone an update on other bills that we have been working on 
which we feel would also contribute, whether directly or indirectly, to this advocacy for better parks management. Through our other measures, we hope to strengthen and highlight the role of design, not just in public spaces, but also in our overall urban life and commerce. I first have to mention the Philippine Creative Industries Development Bill, which is what we treat as the and consider as the foundational measure of all creative industry policies. It begins by defining the creative industries and classifying sectors within it, as well as providing a multitude of programs and incentives that will develop the creative industries, as well as highlight their role in economic development and nation building. Specific to the areas of design, however, are also a number of bills that we have been working on in coordination with the private sector and with government agencies. Although the initial drafts are still being tackled with relevant stakeholders, the laws governing the professions of architects, interior designers, landscape architects, environmental planners, and civil engineers are currently being reviewed. The Special Committee on Creative Industry and Performing Arts in the House, which I chair, launched and concluded a six-part congressional inquiry on these laws, which each lasted at least six hours. From these hearings, as well as from individual consultations that may be stifling our competitiveness on the regional and world stages, we identified key issues of each profession that need to be addressed. The revisions are aimed at strengthening governance mechanisms within the bureaucracy for the better regulation of the profession, as well as at increasing the competitiveness of our design professionals in ASEAN and beyond. Another law that we are seeking to amend is the local government code, specifically to mandate the position of municipal, city, and provincial, provincial architect in every LGU across the country. Currently, only engineers are being mandated by the code in the area of the built environment. However, we feel that placing architects in the local government bureaucracy will aid in improving how our local communities are designed. It is then the vision to ensure that the National and Local Parks Authority and the local architects and engineers work hand in hand towards the better management of local parks. A final measure that I believe can feed into the country's parks management program, though indirectly, is the cultural mapping bill, which the House of Representatives has already approved on third and final reading early, earlier this month. The goal of the bill is to mandate the implementation of cultural mapping activities by our local government units. Through these cultural maps, we will be able to explore, discover, document, analyze, and present information related to a locality's people, communities, societies, places, material products, practices, and narratives. This information and assets can in turn be used as input to other promotional programs of the local government units, including the development of their local parks, which can feature in creative ways the cultural assets that can be found within the locality. This way, the local parks can also serve as local museums and sites, cultural sites that would feature an LGU's unique history and treasures. As I close, I just want to share that this pandemic has forced me, and perhaps the experience is true for many of you as well, to think more about the physical environments that we put around us. It has made me appreciate more what we have around, especially as I spend more time in the 4th District of Pangasinan, which I represent in the House of Representatives. Owing to that importance, I believe it is thus imperative for us policymakers to equip the bureaucracy and even our private sector partners with the right tools and ecosystem that shall allow them to build better designed open public spaces. Together, let us all work towards making our local communities not only more economically advanced, but also more sustainable, livable, and lovable. Again, thank you so much for your time. And let us all remember, hashtag the future is creative. Thank you so much.
Thank you so much, Congressman De Venecia. It's really, really great, you know, um, hearing from you, uh, having the opportunity to listen and understand the perspective of a policymaker and the beautification of these public parks and in the progress of our tourism. And it's very nice that you're initiating and pushing for these kinds of laws um, that focus on the development of public parks and open spaces and sustainable and inclusive tourism in general. So we really salute all your hard work to pass this very important law. And even the acronym PARKS is very nice since we are able to remember all of these correctly. Um, so now at this point, I'm sure we have a lot of um, members of our audience who are interested and also curious about several aspects of what you have just shared. So right now, para sa participants natin na nasa Zoom at uh, Facebook, maaari kayong magtanong sa Q&A section ng Zoom. At sa Facebook naman, maaari kayong magtanong sa comment section. And um, while we're waiting for the questions, uh, first, Congressman De Venecia, so we can open this open this open forum. Um, we we're just curious about the beginnings of the National Parks Act or the Act establishing the Philippine National Public Park System and appropriating funds therefore. So can you share with us the your inspiration? Ano yung dahilan niyo para mabuo ito at um para sa pagsuporta dito, lalo na ngayong pandemya, panahon ng pandemya. Ito yung pandemic. <laughs> ito yung pinaka inspiration. Uh, para sa pagbuo nitong panukalang batas na ito. Actually, it was the office of Congresswoman Geraldine Roman that was the lead proponent uh, in this initiative. Uh, she is a member of the Arts and Culture and Creative Industries Bloc. And in the early, year, in the early days, uh, nung hindi pa namin masyadong gamay uh, yung creative industries dahil nga pandemic and everybody was stuck at home, parang ito yung nagbunsod sa amin na mag mag-propose ng panukala na gagawa ng isang sistema um, para sa mga national and local public parks, uh, a, a system of governance and also a framework for development uh, of uh, these cultural, uh, environmental, and even tourism assets of our country. Um, Siyempre, uh, right now, diba, we're experiencing like a uh, a renewed focus on local tourism. I'm going to keep harping on tourism because it's uh, it's the tourism day today. Um, there's like, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't call it a renaissance because syempre apektado yung ating mga uh, tourism sites and destinations and uh, talagang uh, apektado yung mga stakeholders natin sa sector na yan. But siguro what I mean by renaissance is that Parang there is a renewed focus on local. Um, we experience it in trade and commerce and a focus on our MSMEs and buy and support local. Uh, naging trending hashtag yan. And hanggang ngayon, talagang there is a proclivity towards supporting local. Pero even in travel, there is a proclivity towards local, especially because of like the quarantine restrictions, di ba? And so... Parang um, yung pagkakaroon ng parks, isa yung ano eh, incentive para sa mga turista na bumisita sa isang lugar. Yan yung um, nai-envision namin ni Kong Geraldine at nung iba naming mga kasamahan sa Achieve at yung ibang mga co-author nung Panukala na magkaroon tayo na mas marami pang parks across the Philippines at dapat uh, merong mandated government agency na tututok dito. Uh, dapat may framework for development, dapat may key performance indicators, dapat may key results areas, both tangible and intangibles. Tangible meaning the income that's being generated because you know creative assets and cultural assets do factor in to our um, economic agenda. But then there's also intangible assets such as yung pride of place, um, nagkakaroon ba ng identity, yung isang city or municipality, kung meron silang isang magandang uh, public park, uh, mas nagiging uh, unified ba yung mga mamamayan. So all these things have to be sort of roadmap um, for this particular um, sector and area of governance that we want to make an intervention on. So uh, in short, yun yung naging... Uh, actually, that wasn't a short answer. That was a long. <laughs> in long, um, yun yung naging um, 
uh, impetus namin to file the said measure. Napakaganda, no? Congressman Definition. Kasi talagang mapapaganda lalo at mapapalakas yung local tourism natin dito sa pag-focus talaga nga sa ating public parks. Ano? So, maraming salamat at sinimulan ninyo talaga ito ni Congre- Congresswoman Geraldine. Alright, so nakakuha na po tayo ng unang question mula sa ating participant. So, the first participant cited the Section 6 or the Powers and Functions of the Board. which states the board shall have the following powers, establish minimum quotas for all LGUs for the designation for municipal and city lands for public parks where applicable. So ang tanong po niya ay, how will these minimum quotas be enforced? There are basic provisions in the local government code as well as guidelines provided previously by HLURB for the comprehensive land use plans which have not been followed. How can this be different? Ayan po. All right. So I mean that's a that's a good question, no? Um and again this bill uh has yet to be tackled in the committee and we look forward to the stakeholders giving input. Um the quotas uh and when I think of quotas and I think of creative quotas and I would consider parks quotas as creative quotas because parks are part of cultural sites that is one of nine strategic developmental domains in the creative industry bill na medyo it's further along uh, in the legislative mill than itong bill na ito. Um, pero the thing that comes closest to creative quotas is yung music quotas na meron tayo for the music industry in which uh, based on an executive order that was Past in the time of Cory Aquino, and we are hoping to institutionalize also through our music industry bill, uh, dapat there's a percentage of the radio airtime that shall be dedicated to OPM with an additional percentage. And I think what makes that particular quota more enforceable is yung provision of penalties. Um, hindi naman siya criminal, pero administrative Uh, yung penalties in nature. And perhaps that's something that should be introduced in this bill as well. Uh, because even if quotas are established, kung wala namang sumusunod din, and alam naman natin na marami sa mga panukalang batas natin ay hindi naman gaanong nai-enforce, either it's lack of awareness or lack of capacity to enforce because of... Um, resources that are lacking then you know there is a multitude of issues that that lead towards the yung hindi ma-implement ng tama yung panukala so i mean that's a very good question and we have asked ourselves that you know subsequently after the bill being filed and i think that is a that is a provision that we will have to introduce um, at the time that the bill is finally tackled in the committee All right. Okay. So it's good then ano, that you've cited you know, other kinds of quotas as well as yung, um, stakeholder consultation na ganun din siya ka-importante ngayon para uh, habang binubuo talaga at ina- inaayos itong um, bill na ito. All right. Um, meron tayong isa pang tanong naman. Ang kanyang, ito ay more of suggestion naman. Ano? Ito ay, ang sabi ay, can we add streets as part of this bill? So, the person cited that streets are, you know, the basic unit of urban spaces and they are also uh, multidimensional spaces that provide access, safety, and mobility for all users, environmental quality, and the economic benefit, um, as well as overall quality of life. So, um, what can you say about this uh, suggestion? I think that's a good suggestion because we have to pass through streets in order to access the parks. So right. it's all, it para yung mga nerves um, that all sort of, at mga veins that sort of connect to each other, diba, towards a specific body part. So I think uh, maganda yung suggestion dun sa National Parks Institute na bubu in as a, as a result of the bill. Siguro kailangan makapagbigay din ng uh, technical assistance sa mga LGUs in order to how to better um, develop uh, streets as public spaces because as we've also heard from our landscape architects uh, in our consultations with them, parang they were able to share some best practices of 
of street interventions uh, st- design wise um, uh, happening abroad and even here like in Makati City for example where sometimes it's like a low hanging fruit that's just wait that's just really ripe for the picking parang um, you know a street that can be adorned for example in uh, multicolored umbrellas hovering over it similar to what what you will see in uh i forget if I, i forget if it's piccadilly circus or anyway one of those areas in london and you're, we're starting to see that same design concept being replicated um in other um streets as well uh means naman you see like um large scale public murals whether on the vertical uh, infrastructure meaning on the facades of buildings or sometimes on the horizontal assets like even on the roads themselves um already it creates some kind of uh, attraction na pinag-uusapan ng tao and also is uh, incentive for them to come and visit so parang on the street level there's already a lot of uh, kumbaga synergy with the objectives of this particular measure but of course it always redounds to focus and the amount of resources available so i think what we can do is to calibrate the and rather to synergize the relationship between access roads and the national and local parks so that there is a common thread and a visual narrative and some kind of uh, cohesion uh, in the development of the said program. So, I mean, that's a very good suggestion and we will be sure to look into that. Thank you. That's very nice, ano? Parang we start the experience talaga from the roads and then eventually, you know, uh, pagdating dun sa park, it's so beautiful. You see that vision of um, having a beautiful oh. park tapos starting from the road that you go to. So that's very nice. Thank you for that, uh, Congressman De Venecia. Uh, we also have another question here. Now, the question is, what can we do to push this bill further as regular citizens? Okay. Um, sorry, before I get into that, um, going back to the second question, All right. I just realized na I think sa composition ng board, and there's space pa naman kasi uh, iilan pa lang naman ngayon yung members. Pwede pa tayo magdagdag. I think dapat kasama din pala doon yung Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development. Um, kasi if you're talking about the experience of going to a park starting from the streets, in fact, it starts from the home. <laughs> mm-hmm. right. So sa kung saan pa lang nakatira yung tao leading to the street, dapat that's sort of like a, um, an experience that has to be crafted diba, from start to finish. And there has to be proper policies in place because we also have to think about the accessibility of these uh, public parks to its intended beneficiaries, which is the local stakeholders and the communities, and add on na lang yung tourists then. And so, yeah, that was just an idea that was inspired by the second question. So thank you for that. <laughs> that's very nice. And that's actually true, ano? Kasi napapalawak pa natin itong bill na ito. At talagang um, nakikita natin yung mga stakeholders talaga na affected dito. So thank you uh, so much for that. Uh, the, the third question, how can citizens help yes. with the bill? Um, okay, because... Yung naging karanasan namin doon sa ibang bills like the Creative Industry Development Bill, talaga ang lakas ng support niya sa Congress, sa lower house. So every time kinakausap ko yung mga uh, tao sa mga webinar, yung mga nanonood, I always encourage them to write to the Senate. Kasi alam niyo naman bicameral legislature tayo. So kailangan pumasap sa parehong Congress and sa Senate para maging batas. Not to mention kailangan pirmahan pa ni presidente, di ba? Um, pero dito sa bill na to, um, na-file siya ang tagal-tagal na pero hindi pa rin siya umuurong. So parang hindi ata siya priority right now or at the moment. Um, so I think it will help kung mag-reach out kayo sa congressman ninyo. Um, ilan ba kaming mga co-author dito? Parang less than parang less than 20 lang ata nga yung, yung nag-co-author ng measure. Eh, ilan ba kami sa Congress? Siguro less than 300. 
So imagine parang may balance tayo ng 280 congressmen and hindi pa nagko-co-author ng measure um, or baka hindi pa sila aware na such a measure exists. So hindi naman kailangan lahat mag-co-author pero I think it would help if you reach out to your congressman um, strongly endorsing this bill and then um, na-file to sa... Hindi to na file sa committee natin, di ba? Gio, are you there by any chance? Are you listening? Yes, sir. Um, wala po. It's not public American. works. Yes, sir. Correct. Ayan. O, sino ba yung congressman ng public works? Ayan. Check out, yeah. I'm doing research right now on our sure. Congress website. But it's very Ayan. nice. Mm-mm. Ito na. Si... Uh-huh. Ah, okay, si Congressman Eliandro Jesus F. Madrona. Uh, siya yung congressman ng Lone District of Romblon. So siya yung chairman ng Committee on Public Works and Highways. All right? So kung uh, uh, very passionate kayo sa bill na to, kung pwede niyong tulungan kami para mag-lobby sa kanya by writing him an email, um, yung email ba niyan sa Congress website? Wait lang ah. <laughs> that would be very nice ano, to, you know, to send a uh, message talaga to um, our own Congress men and women and as well as um, Congressman of L- L- Romblon. Right? Uh, uh, okay, ipopost ko yung contact details sa chat. Lovely. All right. Ayan. Okay. Yan yung direct line. Okay. Then I'll so, see if he has a public email. All right. So this is good. This is good that we have the the telephone number and the address of the um of course the House of Representatives and the direct line as well and the committee secretary. So ayon para sa mga interesado at uh, mag-advocate talaga no nitong bill na to. Let's uh send a message, <laughs> an email or a love email. letter. A love letter, correct. <laughs> Let's yeah. show our passion for the bill. This is great. Thank you so much for the for actually researching that on the spot ng uh, contact details. So to the person who asked, um, I hope you see the contact details right now. If ever, NPDC will also be sharing this as well to the rest of our audience. So thank you for that suggestion. Uh, we also have another one naman. And I think this is very nice. I like the question. So the question is, could you share with us some best practices from parks in Pangasinan which we can adapt? So this is a question from um, Zoom. Yeah. Okay. Um, sa district ko kasi, uh, if I think of Dagupan, uh, that yun yung highly urbanized city namin eh. Pero even if it's highly urbanized, marami pa rin, um, open spaces that are, you know, unused or dedicated to, um, of course, farming and um, the agricultural sector, no? Um, and then there's also a lot for fisheries and aquaculture. These are our main industries. Um, pero uh, siguro the thing that comes closest to yung public parks namin is yung meron kaming boardwalk sa Tondaligan Beach uh, sa Dagupan. Um, dati wala yung boardwalk. It was just a beach. Pero nagkaroon tayo ng opportunity para maglagay ng isang tourism intervention since isang focus yun ng opisina natin, yung tourism, and how to galvanize tourism for uh, sustainable uh, economic development. And uh, so nakapagpatayo tayo ng boardwalk, na complete yung phase one, and ever since inopen siya to the public uh, mga a year ago, uh, even prior to the pandemic, so magto two years na, parang talagang dinadayo na siya ng tao. Um, para siyang, parang Santa Monica boardwalk yung feel. Hindi siya yung boardwalk din na pwedeng daanan ng kotse. I had to make sure and uh, uh, medyo it was a political will kind of situation that we had to assert na hindi siya maging daanan ng kotse. Kasi ang, ang theory ko parang hin- nadidiminish yung capacity niya for uh, community and for tourism. Kung uh, may dumadaan na kotse tapos kailangan kay hawe and parang it's not a pleasant uh, experience for the pedestrian tourists. 
So now it's just accessible to pedestrian and to bikes at the most, in term, um, which of course forms part of our sustainable tourism, um, uh, sustainable transport modalities rather. Um, and if I were to compare that boardwalk, dun sa isa naming boardwalk, sa isa naming bayan sa distrito ko, yung San Fabian, parang mas may order yung boardwalk sa Dagupan. Uh, yung sa San Fabian, parang it's like an explosion of different cultural elements na may mga tumatawid na baka <laughs> dun sa boardwalk, tapos minsan merong ipot na naiiwan, tapos may mga bikers, tapos may mga mangis da, tapos may mga resorts. It's like, it's sort of like an explosion of so many things that are going on, you know? Um, and while, uh, you know, it is fascinating to see life from that perspective and it really puts you front and center into the uh into the rural uh bucolic kind of experience uh, if you're a tourist you know biking and then biglang you see fisher folk doing a community catch of fish uh by the seaside by the seashore um and then you have people there for tourism um, staying in sheds, um, you know, enjoying their time swimming, doing water sports. Um, parang it's part of the experience uh, overall, but it can be quite chaotic as well. So the difference between the boardwalk in San Fabian and the boardwalk in Tondaligan is that there is a dedicated authority or a dedicated management system for the boardwalk in Dagupan. Um, and that leads to the everyday cleanup that happens in the park. It leads to better policies. Uh, of course, the boardwalk in Dagupan, um, it's, uh, it's adjacent to Tondaligan Beach, so may sand. So marami nagsiswimming, may mga nagpipiknik. Um, pero Siyempre, may mga nagdadala rin ng aso. Pero of course, yung aso dumudumi rin. So hindi naman pwedeng iniiwan lang doon tapos biglang may mga tumatakbo, nagahabulan, or magsiswimming, tapos biglang matatapakan nila yung naiwan ng aso. So parang it's these like, it's, it's the minutiae of these details that have to be taken into consideration. And if there's a dedicated management system for a particular park na pinopondohan ng LGU, I think that goes a long way. So yun yung parang ini-encourage din namin sa LGU namin sa San Fabian. Of course, malayo ang San Fabian sa Dagupan in terms of fiscal and economic capacity. Si Dagupan is an independent component city. Si San Fabian is a municipality. It's a first-class municipality. Pero isang karagatan yung pagitan dun sa ira nila or sa budget nila to be able to fund programs Siguro si Dagupan na sa mga 1 billion pesos mahigit yung annual budget. Si San Fabian na sa mga higit kumulang 200 million pesos yung annual budget. So, di ba? You see the disparity then in the capacities. Um, but we are encouraging San Fabian to come up with a, a management system for the San Fabian Beach only because parang ecotourism is a, a growth strategy for the town. And so if we want, if they want to be able to attract more tourists uh, to come check out their beaches and experience the boardwalk, then there has to be some semblance of order. It cannot be chaos. Right. All right. Okay, so that, that helps a lot. Ano? So it's really in uh, managing these parks, having like the empowering the local government to actually have the... Man management than sa parks or sa streets or sa um whichever uh tourist spot there is para magkaroon ng order and of course nandiyan yung political will so hindi mawawala yan kailangan ang political will din talaga but that's also why we need the national parks institute correct na uh iker create through this bill kasi mm -hmm. kailangan magkaroon ng centralizing effort to come up with best practices and to provide technical uh, assistance to LGUs who are, uh, you know, maintaining such cultural assets like public parks and other open spaces. Because, like for example, ngayon there is an explosion of opportunity dun sa boardwalk namin sa Dagupan. 
um, since marami nang dumaday ng mga turista, marami ng mga small business owners yung nag-open shop doon. Yung iba sa kanila ambulant vendors pero kumukuha ng permits sa LGU. At ang daming mga pop-ups opening here and there. So it's becoming sort of like a creative a creative sort of hub for the group. In fact, your arts residency program namin na ilo-launch uh, next month will be at the boardwalk in Tondaligan. Wow. It's going to be located in the second floor of the spot, which is a, a, a creator-led uh, hub na doon nagbibenta ng mga, uh, ng mga street art, mga... Uh, street merchandise, mga skateboards, may tattoo shop doon. It's like this whole street culture na very much associated with youth. So, um, doon kami uh, magla-launch ng arts residency program namin starting next month. Uh, pero, um, for me, I think there needs to be more um, strategy also with regards to the development of the area. Kasi parang, napansin ko, ang dami ng mga food businesses doon sa Tondaligan. Parang there are at least five to six takoyaki businesses. <laughs> diba? Right. And at some point, if you don't, if, you, if, if there's no um, framework for mm-hmm. the development of that particular cultural asset, baka at some point, they will start to cannibalize each other. Mm-hmm. And then next thing you know, it becomes counterproductive. And then eventually, after all that investment in putting up your own takoyaki stand, eventually, mag, uh, baka mag-close. Kasi right. because of uh, unmitigated parang uh, competition. Mm-hmm. And so there has to be a developmental framework also uh, in place for uh, developing these cultural sites. Mm-hmm. Um, kasi uh, Kumbaga, para it ladders up rather than it ends up cannibalizing or it, run, it runs counterintuitive to each other, if that makes sense. Yes. So it starts with having a management system, but whoever will be asked to manage that system needs to be capacitated. And there, and there is a, a wealth of best practices that need to be taught. to these people uh, and we envision the NP, the National Parks Institute as being that um, government mechanism to do so. Mm-hmm. So that's good no? to have, so nakaka-excite naman magkawin ng National Parks Institute kasi siya talaga yung magbibigay ng like some sort of direction and strategy, right? For right. the for our parks here in the in the country. So that's yeah. very nice. And it's good then to hear that the parks, pag merong um, some kind of strategy or direction, nagbuboom lalo yung park, especially yung sa Sinite ninyo na um, creative community there in uh, in the in that in that area. So that's very nice. Thank you so much, Congressman De Venecia. And um, I know we're almost at the top of the hour and we're very, very thankful for all of the questions that our live viewers have um. ask through our Zoom and our Facebook uh, live session. So we learned a lot, Congressman. Thank you so much. Uh, before we formally close the session, uh, we'd like to know or hear any concluding statements from you. Do you have any you know, closing ano, um, mga things that you'd like to impart to our audience before we close the session? Hmm. Alam mo, the, the best memories that I have from my travels are always related to experience. Mm-hmm. And so, hindi, hindi man kasi ako maluhong tao, so hindi ako masyadong, alam mo yun, ng mga watches or clothes or cars or kung ano man. Parang for me, I, I pay top dollar or top peso on experiences. And a lot of those memorable experiences are had in public parks. Mm-hmm. Whether it's, you know, Central Park in New York, Ay, John ko na meet actually si Jezreel sa New York. Uh, although hindi Jezreel ni ata tayo nag Central Park sa di, binitbit ata kita sa sa may sa Target or something for a Black Friday sale. <laughs> Macy's. Macy's for a Black Friday. Sale. But anyway, um yes, that's right. Um pero there's something, you know, like my most memorable experiences were really forged in public parks. You know, you can also go to um, in, in London, 
'di ba, yung mga parks doon, um uh, pag mamamasyal ka, magpi-picnic and even ano, kami ni Kong Geraldine uh, back in 2016 when I was able to uh, visit Madrid and visit her and her husband. Um, I remember we had long strolls uh, through the public parks in Madrid. And it's in these strolls that you're able to uh, solidify your friendships with people, forge a lot of memories, um, where you're able to breathe fresh air and soak up the scenery. Uh, you know, we talked about tourism earlier and how um, these places become tourist sites, but it also becomes an enclave for biodiversity. Because right. like I remember in these parks seeing like all these like mga flora and fauna, all these like migratory birds, uh, all these like ducks that are wading in the ponds. Um, and then of course in Central Park, they meron nga silang mga theater kung saan nagperform yung Shakespeare in the park, right. which is free uh, for access to the public. So can you imagine if we can have something like that here in the Philippines? Um, tapos meron silang boathouse, yung lower boathouse, kung saan pwede ka mag-dine, and then may mga nagbo-boating, boating, uh, dun sa tabi mo, um, in which a lot of iconic scenes uh, from uh, famous shows and films have been shot. Mm-hmm. Parang, there's just, parang ang daming benefits ng magkakaroon ng mga public parks sa sure. ating kansa. And I look forward to a, the day na, na bibigyan siya ng halaga ng ating mga LGUs, pati na rin ng national government. Alam ni Jezreel yan, mga kolelat ang NPDC in terms of budget na nakukuha sa government. Oo, pero I look forward to the day na ang NPDC will become one of the most prioritized government agencies because nare-recognize ng government yung value ng public parks dun sa kapakanan ng taong bayan. And... Um, sana nga itong batas na to, kung uh, may pasa siya, will lead the way towards that particular future that we envision. Uh, public parks is very much part of our creative future. Ergo my hashtag right here in my Zoom background. Um, and it's in these spaces where communities gather, where they congregate, where they coagulate, where they... Uh, where there's a, an osmosis of energy and ideas. Um, and so uh, I look forward to the day and that that will happen. And But in the meantime, let's all help each other. Let's help lobby for the passage of this bill uh, to our congressmen and to the committee chair and even to the senators because we need their support as well. And rest assured to the NPDC family, I mean, you will always have my support Um Uh, in the budget and even in other areas outside of the budget. So thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much, Congressman De Venecia. Actually, that's a very nice vision, you know. Ang gandang um, ma-imagine na pagdating ng araw, lahat ng Pilipino, eh, mararanasan nila yung na-experience nyo din sa mga parks sa ibang bansa. So napakaganda po nun. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Um, Actually, before we end po the, the discussion, we have... um. A very good question that we got from our audience, which we think should be very good, would be a good opportunity to ask as well right now. So the question is, will this bill also affect GOCCs that own parks? So by any chance, will the board now govern NPF? Uh, Nayan Pilipina Foundation, yes. Yes, right. uh, that uh, we envision it as a... Uh, being part of the national park system. Actually, Nayan Pilipino is primarily a park. Mm-hmm. So there should be closer synergy uh, between Nayong Pilipino and NPDC. Oh, right. All right. Okay. So that's very. Ano, thank you for the clarification. Na uh, um, hindi na nga ang NPF. Okay. Thank you so much. Ah, uh, sa shinier po niyo ngayong gabi. Sobrang nakakaisip. 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 Si Enchanted Kingdom ba? <laughs> Makocover? I guess. Oh. No, siguro ano, parang di ba, yun nga, providing technical assistance, not just to LGU-run uh, parks and assets and sites, but also maybe private sector-run Right. I don't know. It's something worth considering also. <laughs> Wala oh, lang. Oo, oh, 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 madami din tayong talagang kailangan isipin ngayon. I think even... Um, actually, there was also a question on, you know, private... Um, 
private initiatives when it comes to parks as well. So parang how we can also synergize with the, uh, the private institutions as well as, you know, um, all the other parks here in the country. Well, so, definitely, I think incentives have to be in place mm-hmm. um, for these public-private partnerships to materialize. Because hindi rin, admittedly, uh, even if maging uh, top priority si public parks ng, uh, ng gobyerno, um, kapos pa rin sa resources. Imagine mo kung ilan cities meron sa basa, bansa. That's like 146 cities. And then ilang municipalities mas marami pa. So kung ang target natin or kung ang roadmap for these types of cultural sites will be one per city or one per municipality. Imagine kung gano karaming public parks yun, di ba? So kailangan talaga din ng private sector para ma-encourage din sila na mag-invest. Uh. Yes, that's right. That's right. And it's um very exciting na makita itong mga um very important stakeholders natin para talaga ma-push itong bill na ito. Yes. Ayan. Maraming maraming salamat ulit, Congressman Toff de Venecia. Sobrang, sobrang, sobrang taos puso kami nagpapasalamat sa pagbabahagi ninyo ng mahalagang in- impormasyon na to sa publiko tungkol sa paano kalang batas na ito na nag-uugay sa turismo. And sa mga participants natin, sobrang sana nagkaroon kayo ng appreciation sa prosesong pinagdadaanan upang mapaunlad ang ating public parks and spaces. At uh, upang sa ating mga pamamaraan, maging responsable rin tayong park goers. At um, tulad din ang sinabi kanina ni Congressman Divinesha, uh, very passionate kayo sa bill na ito. Let's um, write to our congressmen and women as well. And uh, sa pagkakataong ito, amin na pong igagawad ang sertipiko ng pagkilala sa ating tagapagsalita. So, Ito ang uh, Certificate of Appreciation uh, for Congressman Christopher VP de Venecia for sharing his valuable insights and knowledge on the webinar, creating better open spaces towards mental strength and creativity, given this 27th of September 2021 via Zoom video conference. This was signed by the Executive Director Cecile Lorenzana Romero. Ayan, muli maraming 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 salamat po, Congressman Toff, at sa ating participants sa parehong Zoom at Facebook platform. Sana ay pare-pareho tayo nabusog sa kalaman sa ating Park Conversations episode ngayong gabi. And before we formally end this program, we are inviting everyone to explore Rizal Park in the comfort of your own home. All you need to do is download the Rizal Park Guide so that you can go on a virtual tour of the National Park's most historic and tranquil landmarks. And to complete your virtual tour, we are giving away Rizal Park goodies worth 3,000 pesos to 10 lucky winners. Wow! And the contest actually ends this Sunday, October 3, 2021 at 11.59 p.m. We look forward to hearing about your favorite spots or memories at Rizal Park, Lineta. Magkita-kita po tayo ulit sa susunod na Park Conversations. Ako po ulit si Mia Lawenko. Maraming maraming salamat at magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat. Para makakuha ng digital certificate, pakisagutan po ang maikling survey na matatagpuan sa Zoom chat box at Facebook live comment section. Makatutulong ito upang mapagbuti pa namin sa NPDC ang kalidad ng aming mga programa at proyekto. Kung nag-enjoy kayo sa Park Conversations webisode ngayong gabi, pakifollow kami sa aming social media accounts upang maging updated sa iba pang makabuluhang programa at proyekto. Para sa Facebook, pakilike ang aming Facebook page sa facebook.com slash npdc.ph Para sa Instagram, pakifollow ang npdc.ph Para sa Twitter, npdc underscore ph at para sa YouTube, mag-subscribe sa National Parks Development Committee.